Back in 2006, researchers working on the detection of deep space radiation discovered anomalous radio signals coming from within our galaxy that appear to be of intelligent communication. It is theorized that the radio signals are believed to be emanating from intelligent extraterrestrial civilizations from distant planets or satellites within our Milky Way galaxy. Support for this claim comes from statistical research models of the current Big Bang radiation theories, predicting expected radio signals and radiation to be less than one-sixth the current measured output of the anomalous radio waves, with researchers giving the extraordinarily loud signal the name space roar given its impossible-to-explain qualities. The difference between the statistical predictions and the observed predictions far exceeds five sigma of chance distribution and are considered anomalous to the degree of either scientifically disproving the current cosmological principle theory or is evidence of an artificial source generating massive outputs of radio waves emanating from a time during the primordial universe. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, in an effort to better understand the phenomenon known as the space roar, we will be going over the theories and evidence surrounding the anomalous discovery and what the research tells us about the origins of the impossible to explain radio waves. Thank you for watching. Back in 2006, NASA would launch a balloon based satellite into the upper atmosphere referred to as the Absolute Radiometer for cosmology, astrophysics, and diffuse emission, also referred to as the Arcade Machine by NASA scientists in charge of the mission. According to NASA researchers, the goal of the mission was to send the arcade machine into the upper atmosphere to gather a series of readings surrounding the background radiation of the universe to use as supporting evidence for the Lambda model of the Big Bang creation period. Equipped with seven radiometers cooled to nearly absolute zero, the arcade instrument was considered at the time to be the most accurate detector of radiation at wavelengths only centimeters in size. After working on the balloon satellite for several years, it would be in July of 2006 that the arcade machine would be launched from the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility based out of Texas, within the small city of Palestine, to begin its primary mission of radiation detection. The balloon would reach a height of 120,000 feet, where it would maintain this height for several days, as it would scan roughly 7% of the night sky during its observations. It is at around 120,000 feet that the atmosphere begins to thin sufficiently enough that the vacuum of space becomes apparent and allows for the collection of accurate raw data. While at this height, the arcade balloon satellite would begin to collect a vast amount of anomalous data that perplexed researchers. According to the lead researcher of the mission, Alan Kogut, of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the incoming data of the arcade balloon satellite recorded ancient primordial radio waves six times larger than the expected amount of radio waves that were projected by the mathematical models of the early universe. As it had been theorized by the Lambda CDM model, the residual radio waves making up the cosmic radio background were believed to be six times smaller than what the arcade satellite had recorded, as the only source of radio waves would have been naturally formed via red-shifting primordial stars primordial galaxies, and possible gas clusters manipulating electromagnetic waves. Alan Kogut would later provide an interview explaining that the detected radio waves far exceeded any expected possible output, and even after several months of detailed analysis, the researchers working on the project were unable to find any explanatory source for the residual radio waves, almost an order of magnitude of greater than theorized expectations. Researchers would go so far as to rule out known radio sources such as pulsars and their fast radio bursts, as well as a large gas cluster located within the outermost halo of our galaxy, possibly causing a form of electromagnetic manipulation or gravitational lensing. Despite their best efforts, Alan Kogut and his team were unable to find any reasonable explanation for the radio waves, which were deemed to be extremely anomalous and impossible to explain with known astrophysical and cosmological theory. Another member of the arcade research team, an American physicist by the name of Dale Fixon from the University of Maryland at College Park, the problem of the radio waves far exceeds any expected norms or possible natural source. 
He would later provide a statement claiming that if every model was to be taken into consideration for all possible natural sources of radio waves in the early universe, there would still not be enough radio galaxies in the universe to explain the level of residual radio waves being detected and that some force other than radio galaxies must be responsible for the detection. Here is a direct quote taken from the NASA article surrounding the incident. The universe really threw us a curve, Kogut says. Instead of the faint signal we hoped to find, here was this booming noise six times louder than anyone had predicted. Detailed analysis ruled out an origin from primordial stars or from known radio sources, including gas in the outermost halo of our own galaxy. The source of this cosmic radio background remains a mystery. Many objects in the universe emit radio waves. In 1931, American physicist Karl Jansky first detected radio static from our own Milky Way galaxy. Similar emission from other galaxies creates a background hiss of radio noise. The problem, notes team member Dale Fixon of the University of Maryland at College Park, is that there doesn't appear to be enough radio galaxies to account for the signal Arcade detected. You'd have to pack them into the universe like sardines, he says. There wouldn't be any space left between one galaxy and the next. In 2011, researchers working on the Arcade 2 mission, which was tasked with reanalyzing the data gathered from the original 2006 Arcade flight, would come to the conclusion that the source of the radio waves had to have been coming from a yet unknown or underestimated galactic source, either originating from ancient galaxies near the dawn of the universe or from ancient residual radio waves from within our own galaxy. A published research paper led by Alan Kogut and his team would claim to have isolated a detection that was believed to have matched the projected expected radio waves generated from the early universe and the cosmic microwave background, and yet was still unable to explain the additional large amounts of residual radio waves. We have presented evidence for isotropic radio emission detected by Arcade 2 beyond what can be explained by our model of galactic emission and the unresolved emission from the known population of discrete sources. After doing several statistical sets and projecting a possible modeling error of about 10% to 50%, the detected radio waves from the 2006 Arcade 1 mission were impossible to discount, far exceeding expectations by significant margins according to their statistical models. The Arcade 2 mission would end their research paper by offering two possible sources for the radio waves. We conclude that the residual signature is due either to a diffuse extragalactic background of emission from discrete radio sources with properties somewhat different than the faint end of the distribution of known natural sources, or to unmodeled residual emission from our own galaxy. Although we believe the former to be more likely, we cannot exclude the latter explanation. In this explanation, the amount of radio waves and the frequency they operated on appear to be at the smallest expected end of the frequency that radio waves were expected to be distributed on by any known natural sources, appearing to have originated from unnatural or perhaps intelligent sources. Although not accepted by the scientific community and widely dismissed without substantial supporting evidence, a small minority of academia and arcade researchers posited the theory that though the cosmological principle theory is accurate, the radio signals are indeed anomalous and could only be explained by the possibility of intelligent extraterrestrial civilizations emanating large amounts of radio waves in all directions from within our own Milky Way galaxy or during the time of the ancient primordial universe. Even more peculiar and supporting of the extraterrestrial theory is that the discovered radio waves exist on the faint end of the expected distribution of natural radio waves, right around the 2G to 3G radio wave frequency. Not only are these specific radio frequencies completely anomalous, as no natural mechanisms are known to produce such specific frequencies, but the fact that the radio frequencies seem to directly match the modern-day radio frequencies commonly used for television, radio and internet communication seems to imply a rather artificial nature to the discovered radio waves. This could imply that the discovered radio waves are remnants of ancient extragalactic civilizations that rose and fell during the time of the primordial universe, and their radio waves have only recently reached our planet. Even less likely, however, 
The radio waves could be evidence of ancient extraterrestrial civilizations from within our own galaxy, bouncing around due to gas clouds and nebulae trapping a repeating signal within the Milky Way, implying an ancient civilization several billion years old that was capable of producing our modern 3G signals more than 10 billion years in the past. Even more interesting, almost a year prior to the discovery of the radio waves, on the 5th of July back in 2005, science fiction author Charles Stross would publish his science fiction novel Accelerando, positing a theory referred to as the theory of Accelerando on the development of advanced civilizations. According to Charles Stross, he would argue that as civilizations advance, their computational power will naturally follow Moore's law causing computers to double in their computational power every two years. If one follows the trajectory of Moore's law, it is inevitable that the mind of the species responsible for the computational devices will eventually be outpaced by their own technology's computational power. In this regard, for the species to continue their line of efficiency and maintain Moore's law, they would be required to artificially enhance their own intelligence in a way that directly matches with their expected computational growth. Although it is theoretically possible for a species to genetically enhance their intelligence through gene editing, Charles Strauss argues the inevitable conclusion of a species slowly forming symbiotic connections with technology in ever-increasing dependencies. In this sense, the theory of El Accelerando postulates that the inevitable technological evolution of an alien race is in the total conversion of consciousness into computational function. By converting their consciousness into an artificial intelligence hosted on computational devices, any species would be able to both match their computational power while increasing their own intellectual evolution. At the rate of humanity's technological progress, Charles Stross believed that in the next few decades, humans would begin to offload memories onto cloud-based servers and eventually copy entire conscious mechanisms into a physics-based computational engine to copy their minds down into computational devices. If Charles Stross's theory of Accelerando is accurate, it could be that ancient extraterrestrial civilizations have also accomplished such a feat countless millennia in the past, and their entire consciousness is being transmitted and shared across a galactic scale being sent throughout solar systems at the speed of light to technological computational-based societies. Stross argues that computational societies would no longer need physical matter such as planets, food and water to survive, but would only need the conversion of pure energy and the construction of computational devices existing entirely in a cyberspace around harvested stars. Such evidence of massive artificial constructions orbiting stars for harvesting energy has been detected and argued after the discovery of Tabby's star an anomalous star believed to have an anomalous orbiting body atypical of naturally formed celestial bodies. In this regard, the discovery of the radio waves six times larger than the expected output model by the current Lambda CDM model could be evidence of an ancient galactic internet connection stretching across the stars, connected by radio signals sharing data and pure alien consciousness traveling through the galaxy at the speed of light. Given the fact that NASA appears to be interested in isolating the space raw signal to an incredibly accurate degree, having the Arcade 2 team model any expected natural radio waves and removing them from the data to get a pure space raw signal, it could mean that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration already believes the signal to have an intelligent origin that could potentially be deciphered. Charles Stross would argue towards the end of his novel that ancient galactic civilizations that did follow the theory of Accelerando would openly transmit instructions to emerging civilizations on how to connect to the galactic signal to allow connections to different planets across the stars. This could mean that such a signal is already being studied and deciphered by NASA in the modern day. Oddly enough, despite making superficial media headlines, Conspiracy theorists believe that NASA has made several attempts to cover up the space raw anomaly by dismissing the radio wave data as a possible modeling error while artificially inflating their expected natural distribution of statistics to make the recovered data seem far less anomalous than it truly is. According to the Arcade 2, the mission led back in 2011, with the primary purpose of analyzing the data recovered from the 2006 Arcade flight, the researchers were tasked with making several different models of slight variations and assuming a 50% modeling error 
with any data within two sigmas of significance to be dismissed. Despite this extremely wide margin of error, researchers were still unable to dismiss the anomalous radio waves that far exceeded the distribution significance. In no other cosmological model would a 50% modeling error, with data independently confirmed from two separate sources, be considered a reasonable practice, lending credence to the possible cover-up theory. Additionally, any data and research surrounding the 2006 Arcade findings would not be made public for several years following the mission, when the Arcade 2 mission paper was finally published back in 2011. But what do you think about these strange theories and bizarre NASA reports surrounding the impossible to explain radio wave readings known as the space roll? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.